Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith and I'm your host, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. All right, let's go inside. All right, we're bringing you in on this project before I actually start hacking this up. This is a hatch <clears throat> and it's a hatch that's going on a tugboat and they need to narrow this hatch. They can't get a hatch the size opening that they're trying to create on the tugboat. So this is a standard hatch <clears throat> that is you can purchase online and that is already in stock because they have it. Um, and basically this is the outside of the hatch. This is the combing or the seal mounting surface that welds into the wall or deck or position on the boat that the hatch is going to be installed. Um, the only criteria we have is that the outside of this frame or the combing to be 24 inches. So we measured this up and basically what we're taking out of here is six and <coughs> six and three quarter inches. So that's going to be a section about like that right out of it. Now we have to narrow that piece and we have to narrow the actual hatch. All right, so I'm going to spin this around the other way so you can get a look at it from there real quickly. You have the inside of the dog, the dog finger here hits against the ramps that you see up on there. This is the rubber seal right here and you can see where the, the last or the chalk test was performed on, on hatches and, and um, ceiling surfaces, stern gates, things like that in the shipyards. You do a chalk test and then you had a hydro or a, a water hose or a fire hose test to it. And, uh, and then also too on your dock uh, systems you also had a submerging test um, and they all had to pass no leaks or a minimal amount of leaking was allowed. Okay, so there's cross ribs and there's shapes and we got to pull this gasket out and there's going to be a lot as we're going along. So we're going to start this off and we want to see if we can cut this piece so that we have two surfaces that can be easily welded together to hold the shape that it's in only with the new narrowed dimensions. All right, so um, let's put this off to the side here. Okay, I've laid out two lines here at each top and bottom of this and then I punch marked, single punch marks on this so I know the piece that's taken out. This piece has an ear on it and I want to duplicate it on this end afterwards. Maybe I'll scarf it off, maybe I'll just duplicate it and, and leave it as a sample on this piece here. Uh, but that, that way the punch marks will, will go together. It's kind of hard to screw this up because it, it's got a flange that faces one way and it's just going to come together and then be re-walled. Re but if this was flat or anything else, it's a good idea to go ahead and punch mark it so you know which split line uh, uh, pieces you're doing so one doesn't get flipped inside out or whatever. Um, I'm going to um, try, only because I was really impressed on the Linux uh, jigsaw blades, and I really haven't had a good chance to demonstrate them or review them uh, other than what you saw in my videos when we went to uh, Baltimore and uh, and it, we we did some uh, 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 cutting up on on the car with the uh, with the uh, blades that fit into the uh, sawzalls and the arc blade for the jigsaw when we went to um, Linux plant over there in, near uh, Greenfield or Springfield, Massachusetts. All right, I gotta pop. I gotta pop this uh, this blade out here. This is uh, one of their wood blades I was using on some plywood there. And 
this is a medium metal Linux blade, and this is a curved blade. Okay, looks like we're ready to go. Okay, you can see the line here. We're going to try to um, cut that right on the line. This is, I think this is like 5 sixteenths of an inch thick here. Okay, I'm sure I'm up against that wall right there now. But while I'm holding it here, I'm going to go ahead and make this cut. Do the same thing on the other side there. And then we'll be able to make the vertical cuts down here, down the scribe line there. But this blade looks like it's doing the job. I have several of them up there. And we'll see how far we can push this one blade. All right, here's our second cut here. Alright, we flip this over so that we have the flat side of the flange towards the, the base and we clamp it so I think it'll pretty well hold it from doing this bit on us. Um, so our cuts are laying along the outside edge here and we need to cut up or cut down from here and I think, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually somewhat angle it up slightly and I'm just going, you know, on the shooting in the dark here. So I'm going to start there so I come through that slot, come around the corner, and then come directly up and see if I can get this this way. And of course, I got the face shield on here because believe it or not, this little thing throws some wicked chips all over the place. And even though I wear my safety glasses, and uh, things like that you get a lot of ricochets and so I do I when I feel ricochets coming at me I put on a face shield all right I don't need gloves uh, we're not really working with a heavy-duty hotness here or anything else so let's see what we do here
I was pulling back this way here because that, I'm starting to dull slightly here, but I can I know I have good teeth out here where it hasn't been cutting, so I kind of gave it a little bit of a pivot. All right, that kind of worked out. Let's see if it'll work out three more times. All right, we're gonna put a piece of metal here with another couple clamps, kind of holding it in the same position as it was before that cut was put in there. All right, you wanted to see what our blade's looking like. We're, we're getting a little collar in there. And you can see where the majority of the wear was here and I'm starting to pull it so that I'm working this teeth out here. Seems to be working okay. I still got enough room in here. So let's, let's see how we fare on this one here. Again, we're going to go ahead and we'll clamp that piece back in there so we hold the same strain on the ring for each of the cuts. We got two more to go. One more. Okay, this this last cut, it al almost looked like we were curving up, but the, the cut itself looks pretty good. And the blade is getting bluer towards the end there as well. So it is getting quite a bit of heat. We're not using any fluids or anything else on this. This is a, a cold, dry cut. Okay, it was well worth one blade to cut this hatch four places around the corner on a scribe cut. We prep, grind prep this one here and it's just basically giving ourselves a welding angle with a locating edge right in the center. That way we can get full penetration all the way around on this part here. So we're gonna do this to the other three, lo uh, three mating surfaces. Okay, we've got it clamped together and held in position, so now we're going to go ahead and throw a couple tacks on here.
Okay, we unclamped it and took the wire brush and we just kind of hit it a little bit there. I don't want to weld this up solid yet because we want to fit this and if we have to do any kind of changing and we, we, we want to look at this chalk line on here. I mean, when you sight this thing off the end, it almost looks like this is narrower than, than it is in here. And I think it's just the way it angles or it looks, but it's the same dimension, but it curves around here and it almost looks, now the chalk line looks light here and looks light over there. But regardless, our main objective was to make the mean width 24 inches and from the outside to outside we've made that 24 inches. That basically is an 18 inch hole or walk through access. All right, now we can set this off to the side and we're gonna get the hatch up here and get it marked and we gotta cut it into two halves to weld back together just like this.